Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're seeing this video, then it's because I've already announced the big news <laughs> that I had my baby inshallah and hopefully everything went smoothly and they're healthy and well and that is why you are seeing this. So I wanted to come on and share it with you guys this news. Obviously, I'm still pregnant now, but when you're seeing this, everything inshallah has gone smoothly. But I wanted to kind of talk you guys through why I kept it a secret. If you know me, I already also when I got married, I didn't announce it until after the fact. So I feel like we're kind of on a roll <laughs> with how we move with things. But I wanted to yeah explain why I kept it a secret and then also talk about how it's been progressing so far. Let's get into it. So why did I keep it a secret? So I'm a practicing Muslim and I do believe in the evil eye. And so just because pregnancy is something that goes through a process, right? You have the first three trimesters and all the milestones that happen during those times. I just didn't want to jeopardize it or just bring any harm to something that can easily go wrong for any reason. And in this day and age, you know, there are so many people who go through like infertility issues or they want to start a family, but they're not in the position to. And so I just felt like I didn't want to broadcast this in a way that could inadvertently affect my child. I know there's ways to protect myself Islamically, but at the same time, I also know that it's a better idea to share something when it's already complete. And I know, I didn't know a lot of African cultures do this, so I feel like, you know, I'm not doing something out of the ordinary. And I've also noticed it's a trend to have like a private pregnancy, so that wasn't my intention to like jump on that trend. It was just like, I knew if that time came, I wouldn't broadcast it for the whole world until everything was said and done and it's gone smoothly. So I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from, but like if you feel like, hey, if it was me, I would tell the whole world and I wouldn't care, that's totally fine. But I did me and this is what I wanted to do, so yeah. Anywho, so if I were to talk about the first trimester, it was hard, I got really, really sick. I found out pretty early and so because of that I just knew like something was different I could I could tell that something was going on but when I actually officially found out I started getting cramps really early on I think it was like five or six weeks in I was getting these really bad cramps it felt like I was on my period but like I couldn't take medicine so I thought it was only me who experienced who was experiencing that but I happened to see a video by this youtuber and she was describing the same thing having these intense period pains like that you get on your first and second day and so that's when I was like phew alhamdulillah it's not just me but the only downside is you can't take medication right to relieve that pain so I literally had to experience it at such random times I'd be driving and these cramps would start and I would just have to breathe through them or I'd be laying in bed and it would just like randomly start it was horrible like it was so bad and then the food aversion kicked in and the morning sickness kicked in so I couldn't like look at food I couldn't I couldn't eat and it, I didn't have like sensitivity to smell necessarily it was just the thought of eating made me sick but I knew I had to eat in order to not get sick so it was a struggle. I got really sick and then I happened to get COVID. I was able to avoid it for how many years? But no, right when I got pregnant, I ended up getting COVID and then that just like started all the symptoms. So I was a TMI, I was throwing up a lot and then I was able to get anti-nausea medication from my doctor and that really helped. If it wasn't for that medication, I don't know how I would have survived the first trimester but thanks to that medication I was able to at least eat but I wasn't able to eat everything I wanted I still was like ugh, about a lot of stuff and surprisingly I could eat like pizza and like fast food and be totally fine but if I wanted to eat anything more healthy and lean it just made me so nauseous like I, I couldn't do it so I don't know why that was the case but it worked and so that's what I did for a while and the cramps still continued, like I still had cramps and then I found out the reason you get those cramps is because your uterus is like growing, especially if it's your first pregnancy, it's the first time that your uterus is going through this process, so I was really feeling it, but it's just I never heard people talk about this, so it was a lot. And then, alhamdulillah, when I entered the second trimester, 
my nausea and food aversion didn't go away. Some people say, oh, when you get into the second trimester, it's like the honeymoon phase and you're feeling like yourself again and all that stuff and you can eat. But for me, it took a few weeks into the second trimester to like feel like I could get off my medication. And then when I finally did, um, I was able to eat, but I still had like some food aversions. And I was really, really picky about what I wanted to eat. So that was not exciting because I'm not a picky eater. There are certain things I don't like, but in general, I feel like there's more that I enjoy than I don't. So after I got rid of like the nausea and that and whatnot, I started getting sciatica pain. And if you don't know what that is, it's like a shooting pain that starts for me, it was on my left side. It's like right in your butt and it goes, it shoots down to your leg. And I had that for about two weeks and it was horrible because sometimes it would get to a point where I couldn't walk. They recommend these like stretches and things that you should do, but I think you're not supposed to do the stretches in like, I don't know, the full capacity. Like you're just supposed to do it lightly and gently but I was doing the full thing thinking it was helping me but it actually like in a way like paralyzed me I couldn't move after doing one of the stretches and I actually like needed help to get up to walk and I couldn't even walk I had to like sit in the rolly spinny chairs office chair and be moved around it was it was really bad so alhamdulillah after two weeks it like stopped so that was great and then after that I didn't get any other intense symptoms it was just being tired and still being picky when it came to eating but then i obviously still was able to eat so alhamdulillah that was great and now i'm currently in my third trimester so i'm eight months pregnant i only have one month left which i, I still can't believe alhamdulillah so my symptoms i would say for the third trimester so far is that i'm tired again I feel like the food aversion has come back again. I don't know what I want to eat. Everything sounds gross. I don't like have nausea to the point I actually throw up. It's just everything doesn't sound good at all. Even though I'm hungry, I don't know what I want to eat. So that's been frustrating. And then I can feel the shortness of breath because this is the point where like now everything is being pushed up, right? And like compressed. So I can feel that my stomach is a lot like constricted and I can't eat as much as I want. So I've had to like switch to smaller meals, which which is recommended. And then I can also feel like I was saying the shortness of breath, like it's so hard to talk and breathe at the same time. So that was not, that hasn't been fun, but it is what it is. And anything else? I'm still tired. I always want to take a nap, but then sometimes pregnant insomnia is a thing. So sometimes I can't sleep even though I want to sleep. And then sometimes I'll have these bursts of energy where I want to do things and I'll go ahead and like do laundry or wash the dishes. And then when I'm done, I'm like exhausted. So it's just been this like roller coaster of things, but alhamdulillah, I am doing well so far. The only thing I'm like concerned about, obviously I don't think I even look eight months pregnant, just like looking at the viewfinder, um, but I know there are tall tale signs that show that someone is pregnant just by looking at them. And usually I'm really good at that too. Like you can tell some people get the pregnancy nose, some people's faces get like really swollen. I feel like my, with the weight gain I've made, like my double chin is more prominent, but it's nothing like out of the ordinary because that's been something I've struggled with for many years, but, and I feel like it's really normal, but yeah, I don't know if like my symptoms are necessarily gonna hit when I'm like closer, when I'm about to give birth. Like, is that when I'm gonna start swelling and is that, when I'm gonna like get the pregnancy nose, I don't know, but yeah, alhamdulillah, so far so good, but we'll see. And if it does happen, it is what it is, but I'm also like, <laughs> please no, I don't want my face to change, but hey, what can you do? So yeah, if you guys have any questions, you know, related to something I didn't answer, then go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I will definitely try to answer them, maybe answer them in another video. And then also, yeah, our gender reveal was totally messed up because Korea has these rules that not all doctors follow, but my doctor, who's really good at speaking English, but she's not my doctor anymore, but she, was really persistent about following this law that even though it's there, nobody actually follows it. So if you guys want to hear more about that and how that kind of not ruined, but in a way ruined the way I wanted to do my gender reveal for the first time ever, 
um, I can do that in another video as well along with the questions that you guys ask so that there's more content in that video so yeah so let me know any questions that you have down below let me know if you want to hear about what happened there's actually a new law that has that's going to be passed prevent doctors from not telling you the gender until the 32 weeks like the law is that they have to wait till 32 weeks because a long time ago people would use that information to decide whether or not to terminate the pregnancy so but obviously these days most people are not trying to find out the gender in order to decide whether or not they want to keep the baby or not so yeah i just feel like it's a bit outdated and a lot of doctors don't really follow that so i'm grateful for that but yeah if you want to hear more about how it got ruined and how confusing it was then i will answer that in my next video inshallah so i will stop rambling and i'll see you guys in my next video bye assalamualaikum annyeong bye